three, two, one. Hey, everybody. Welcome to another episode of STG Weekly, a.k.a. the Shooting Game Weekly. I'm the F-Man, a.k.a. Frenetic, coming at you with another series of uh, Shmup Mania. Um, Shoutouts to Jamers, who's going to be our very special guest today. Uh, he'll be commenting on his Esper Day live run for Shmup Mania. As well, we'll have a little uh, other uh, extra omaki treats for you after his main run. So, uh, you know, think of questions to ask Jamers and whatnot. And uh, uh, I'm joined here by my fellow co hosts. Uh, we have Soft Drink. Hey, hey, how's it going? And we all also have the one, the only, Aquas. Hey, everyone. Anyways, that's enough for, uh, for me, the F-Man. Um, and I'm going to hand this off to uh, the illustrious soft drink and Jamer. So take it away. Thanks for uh, for the warm-up there. That was that was really great info. Um, Thanks, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so uh, Shmup Mania, as uh, many of the viewers might be aware, was a live stream sort of international collaborative uh, event that took place uh, May first and second in uh, Western time zone, then second and third in um, Japan. And um, uh, I, I don't know what you'd call it, Eastern time zones, I guess. I don't, I don't know what the, what the proper term is for that. But um, so it took place a few weeks ago now, and there's a little bit of a delay in, in the, the coverage for that. So my apologies, there were some scheduling difficulties that precluded getting it uh, to happen a little bit sooner. But we are still planning to follow up with uh, a couple of remaining players after this uh, and today we're talking about uh, Esperade, which was played by actually two Western players, uh, Jamerus and Moglar, who we had on for his uh, Ketsui run. We we did uh, ask Moglar if he wanted to be on for the uh, Esperade episode, but he declined. Uh, so that leaves just you, Jamerus. And uh, you had an sp- absolutely spectacular run during the event. So... Um, can, can you start off maybe giving us a little bit of history about like how you were invited to the event and what the story behind that was? Because I know you were a very last minute addition. Yeah, thanks. Thanks. Yeah. Yeah. How I actually came on the event was like, um, I think like a couple of weeks before the event, like uh, like Gus asked me if I wanted to uh, like join. And I said like, yeah, okay, I'll, uh, I'll consider it, of course, depending on like time, times and, uh, and details and all that stuff. Um, so I didn't actually hear anything after that, but I did see that uh, a schedule was posted at some point of the event, and uh, Esprit was like uh, like something like 6 a.m. for me. <laughs> that uh, that was not very ideal. <laughs> right. But uh, like a couple of days before the event began, there was like a schedule change, and uh, Esprit was suddenly like a lot later, and uh, from. That was like a lot better time for me, so I guess, hey, why not? Let's join. Let's go for it. We do it for the team. <laughs> and that's pretty much how it happened. Cool, okay. Um, yeah, I remember talking to you before the event and, and being very surprised at how, how kind of sudden that was. Like how you suddenly, you weren't on the schedule and then you were on the schedule. And, uh, I'm, I'm glad it worked out because uh, you definitely played quite well. Thanks, yeah, thanks. <laughs> um, I think, we, I think we lost Frenetic for a minute here. Um, he okay. always okay. comes back. Yeah, yeah. We'll see. <laughs> <laughs> um, cool. Well, you know, it, it's... Uh, I guess, is, is there anything else that you want to share about sort of your your practice or your preparation for this? I know you said that you'd only really been playing the game for a couple months kind of since the M2 port came out. Um did you feel yeah, pretty confident cool. going into it, or um, or were you still kind of nervous before the run? Um, like I did have, I did play the game for like a couple of months since uh, yeah, the two port came out, but not really anymore after like uh, Shmop Slam was like the last time I think I really played the game. <laughs> so yeah, I only had like a day to uh, prepare for the event. Um, I was a bit nervous about it, of course, but don't. Uh, it was okay for like a clear and that kind of stuff. I think that was already for it. So I uh, didn't really expect how well I did at all. <laughs> so yeah, a nice surprise. <laughs> awesome. But I did have like uh, just enough time to like relearn the game and uh, practice a tiny bit. So 
just just enough time. Hmm. Awesome. Yeah, well, I'm definitely glad that you you ended up being able to make it and, and put in that last minute effort because it clearly shows in the run. Um, very cool. So, uh, while we're kind of on the topic, uh, maybe we should, since I don't think we've covered S Braid on FTG Weekly at all, um, maybe we should give a, a bit of a rundown about the game and, and maybe about the port too, uh, since that's sort of a recent development that is quite significant with this game. For sure, yeah. Um, so, I mean, I'm just trying to think about the best way to, to introduce this. Um, yeah, it's the, the second game after Dulumpachi, actually. It's the yeah. game right after Dulumpachi that gave me it. It's like a 98, was it? And it was like a bit of a different team to the game. It's like a, a junior anyway. Joker Jun had like a lot of influence in the art direction of this game. Yeah, very clearly. It's I think it's yeah. aesthetically one of the the most like coherent and unique games that Cave has produced. Yeah, I think in terms of like uh, like story and atmosphere, that's this is definitely like one of the best Cave has ever made in my opinion. Yeah, it's just so charming and such such a deep like uh, like background to uh, like atmosphere, world building. It's it's very cool, cool uh, all that, all of it. Yeah, absolutely. I think, I think uh, Mark said like. Uh, if Akira was a shmup, it would be this. <laughs> it would be as great. Yeah, I, I think that, that influence really is really yeah. hard to deny. You know, it, it's it's so clearly is drawing on some of the same aesthetic concepts, and um, you know, even just the whole like kids with psychic powers flying around and blowing up like government weapons and stuff like that. <laughs> pretty pretty similar. This um, was like Cave's uh, first char character shmup, wasn't it? With like people flying around. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. Guangye would before, come after. Uh, Guangye was after, yeah. Mm. And Galuda one was after also, I believe. Yeah, it was a pretty big shift, so which is pretty pretty sweet. And you know, the ESP series, of course, ended up being pretty big series for them. And yeah, and I like mm. that M two went with ESP uh, Rade instead of um, because you know we had the Galuda port and the PS two, and then we had Galuda two on the Xbox three hundred and sixty. So it was time to kind of com complete the releases of the Rod A game. So it's really great because you know it's you know it's not the most complex of Cave's games. You know you can play it really straightforward, traditional style for the most part. But of course it does have its own scoring system, and we'll be getting into that as well. Yeah, well it's yeah. interesting to compare them as a series because I think the the Galo games go a lot further in terms of like mechanical complexity. Like one of the things I really like about um, Esperade is that it, it is very straightforward in a lot of ways. Like there, there's intricacies to doing it well, but most of the basic mechanics are actually really straightforward compared to a lot of caves later, like scoring systems and stuff. Yeah, the splatter yeah. shot. <laughs> right. <Yeah. laughs> I wonder what the official name of it even is. Uh, power shot, I believe. Power shot, nice. That sounds better than splatter. <laughs> I think it was like a yeah. shmups forum thing that phrase that initiated. I don't know. <laughs> I poor, I poor if you were uh, Tom. <laughs> so, uh, so yeah, I guess um, that sort of leads us into mechanics and, and how the game works. Um, so there's a a kind of basic auto shot. Um, that each character has access to. There's, there's three different player characters, uh, and that they each have like an auto shot and a, a power shot, uh, as I guess we're calling it. Um, and the the strength of both of those is proportional to the amount of power up items that you've collected. Um, but the power shot is a little interesting in how it works because it's sort of like it has like a little bit of a meter that recharges over time. And so as you power up your main shot strength, um, the the power up for your power shot is instead like it, it increases the length of that meter and the longer that meter is the more that you spend at once the more of your your power shot you fire um, and the power shot you know does additional damage it lingers on the screen but it also has a lot of implications for scoring because uh, the the primary scoring mechanic in the game has to do with the, the sort of chain multiplier which is applied when you uh, hit enemies with your your power shot and that has a maximum value of uh, 16, which is the 15 levels of your power shot gauge plus one. Uh, I think that's right, right? Yeah, it sounds about right, yeah. 
Uh, the different characters all have like different uh, power shots, like and how they work, how easily they can be uh, like managed, manipulated, and all of different kind of damage values as well. Right. But it will be uh, her power shot is definitely like way stronger than a normal shot. A normal shot is like very very weak, so you have to rely on the power shot a lot to do damage. Mm -hmm. And uh, is there a specific reason that that you? You know that that character is is chosen so much. Is she the highest scoring character in the game? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, it's a um, shot is like very shot the power shot together as like very easily to like score with in terms of like uh, pulling off the like times sixteen multipliers and um, in a way your shot also the uh, power shot also behaves. It makes it easy to like hit. Enemies and bosses like very, but with just like one point of the power shot, like one tip of it, that's also like very strong for scoring with uh, like the, the milking and all that stuff. What's it stages? It's just also very easy. To just she makes it very easy to just do the the scoring, the chaining and all that stuff. Right, because to get the X16, yeah, yeah. you gotta like you know I think I don't know if we mentioned it, but you gotta kill like the enemy. After you hit it with the power shot, so right, you gotta like you gotta like yeah. stick yeah. it on them and then kill them as it's yeah. floating. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And then afterwards, uh, there's like a little like chaining timer for the X16, as I understand. Mm -hmm. Depends on uh, how many bullets you cancel and uh, how many of those boxes you collect during the chain. It's a tiny bit okay. like Gatsui, I'd say. Right, and, and so that leads into the next thing, which is the little the little score cubes. Um, so as you're you know, after you land a hit like that, you can cancel bullets into these score cubes, and enemies will also drop the score cube. Um, and the score cube, the score cube, yeah, score cubes contribute to a counter uh, right next to your your stock indicator, um, and that counter will actually determine your your bomb recharge. But it also uh, influences the uh, the per um, excuse me, like the the chain timer. And there's sort of like a delay that's on that as well that, that varies a little bit depending on um, the, the total count of those cubes you've collected, right? Or am I, or am I incorrect on that? Yeah, the bomb, the bomb system is like pretty, pretty weird in this game. You, um, like you collect those boxes and if, like the first time the maximum you get is 200. Once you collect right. 200, uh, after you've, after then if you have you a bomb, then the, the 200 will start counting down, and during that time, you can collect uh, bomb items from enemies. They drop bomb items instead of uh, instead of the point items. Right. And, uh, if you uh, collect, yeah, during that time, you have to collect the bomb items, and uh, after that, the item counter increases to uh, 300, and then 400, and 500, and success, etc. Before you can uh, trigger another uh, yeah, refill, I can say bomb refill. It's pretty. It's pretty weird. <laughs> yeah, and that and that doesn't go down ever. So it, it's cumulative across your lives, right? Yeah. Um, yeah. So once you know, once you raise it to three hundred, that's when you're getting your next bomb refill, even if you die in the meantime. Um, yeah, that's correct. Yeah, that's good. And then um, the other interesting thing having to do with the bomb mechanic is that bombing actually freezes your multiplier value and your uh, chain timer, right? That's only with player two. That's really a bug. It's actually a bug. <laughs> oh, okay. So I, I knew that it happened, but I didn't realize it was only for player two. That's very interesting. Okay. Yeah, it's used pretty heavily in uh, stage five B with all yeah. the Atlas clones. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It seems like a huge trick in that in that area. Yeah, uh, player one can't do that, so they lose a lot of score there. Well, that explains why you're playing on P two side then. Yeah, but basically everyone does that, uh, right? But I think mm. the, the latest world record actually uses player one, so that's mysterious. Oh, that's <laughs> very interesting. Like the very, very recent world record by I think Tuck, I think. That's very, very interesting. Okay, I'm, I'm some, so sort of secret, some sort of yeah. secret, some sort of secret. Yeah, we gonna have a, a Esprit glitch hunt bounty, secret replay hunting. <laughs> anyway, um, interesting. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's like just like a yeah. screenshot of like an impossibly high score that you normally can get in the game. So maybe there's something weird going on as well. 
like I think uh, Dodonpachi and uh, Asprey share like the same uh, same hardware I think so something similar could be going on for all we know oh boy we gotta we gotta find like what side glitch or whatever we should call it here instead of glitcho that's great <laughs> uh, maybe there's a a woke Alice clone somewhere with no uh, <laughs> <laughs> with no point values <laughs> Oh man, yeah, that's fascinating. I'm actually incredibly curious what that what that looks like, um, and it, it's not just from like insane boss milking or something. Right? No, it's it's impossibly high. You can't get it any norm, to any normal means. Okay. Uh, oh, well, man. let's let's take a moment to talk about the bomb system and then maybe get into the the boss milking and sort of the differences between the uh, the arcade and the arcade plus version, which is what you're going to be showing here. Um, so One the, the thing we should mention actually about the item counter is that also when you reach the maximum, like in this case 200 here on screen, you actually you activate the fever mode. And during fever mode, um, you don't. There's a specific uh, during fever mode, any enemy you kill in a chain uh, cancels their bullets into items, so you don't have to constantly like cover every enemy with us with a power shot times 16 to make them drop all their maximum items so that's one thing fever mode does that's also very important hmm. okay um yeah that, that's sort of what i was alluding to earlier uh but i didn't i didn't know the specifics on it where when you're in i knew there was something that happened with relating you know relating to scoring and chaining and, and the item drop when you hit your max but i i didn't know the specifics on it yeah. so thank you for that that's also why uh, that's also why dying is bad because you lose like half, you know, like half your item count or something. So you also lose the FIFA mode and that like uh, snowballs everything into uh, into bad places. <laughs> right. Um, so so yeah, the the bomb system is going to be pretty familiar to people who played the uh, the Galuda games. Um, it's sort of a a barrier around you that. Um, Built, you can hold down and charge, and then will release in a in a kind of like laser uh, that does a lot of concentrated damage. Um, but the again, the recharge system for the bombs is tied into your scoring system and the number of these kind of uh, score cubes that you've collected. So it, it's it's very different in terms of mechanics of how you actually like build your bombs back up. Um, and in general. We're not going to be seeing much bomb use in this run, except for a specific, like a couple specific planned ones, and then the ones used against the Alice Pong in Day 5 Correct? Right? Yeah, correct. It's like so hard to like uh, route bombs in this game because of there's so many like repercussions of bombing once, <laughs> like uh, like the bomb uh, refill thing happens, and then you have to also like refill all the way back to fever mode, and it's it's a big mess. <laughs> it's really hard to route. Yeah. Like the uh, YMG, um, the other player during Shrop Mania, had like a different strat in stage one where uh, you began with a bomb to quickly get to max power. And that is like really difficult because you have to, uh, have to, because you have to like refill like all your, all those items. You have to get them all before like this start of stage two. And that's like super, super hard. Yeah. <laughs> you, basically, you basically can't make any mistake. It's really tricky. Yeah, it's interesting to to see kind of the routing differences between the runs that we that we saw live. Uh, pretty cool to to do a comparison. And he was also playing original arcade mode, right? Not not a arcade plus. Correct. Yeah. Correct. Yeah. So uh, let's talk a little bit about the differences there. Um, are there any are there any mechanical differences in terms of most of the major game systems other than the the boss milking, um, which I guess we also haven't introduced yet, but we can sort of talk about that at the same time. Uh, the only like two real things are that uh, boss milking is like heavily reduced. Like basically, uh, you only get score from the power shot during bosses if you hit two or more targets with the, the power shot. So that's either like the boss and a part of the boss, like a boss part, a gun turret or something. Mm -hmm. So once you run out of uh, boss parts, you basically can't milk anymore. And that's basically. Uh, Basically, it yeah, <laughs> it reduces a lot of uh, milking, like like seventy percent or something. 
Right, and, and to clarify, the boss milking in arcade mode was uh, basically you would get points every time you hit the boss with your power shot. And so there were strategies that were adopted in, in high scoring runs in the arcade mode where you would hit the boss with just like one tiny, tiny little piece of your power shot to get like 2,000 points or something and then wait for your shot to recharge and then do it again and wait for it to recharge and do it again. Um, yeah, the power shot consists of like 16 of these bubbles. And like the, the if you hit an enemy with just one of those bubbles, you actually get more score than if you uh, would hit it with multiple. So that's also a, a big thing. <laughs> so weird. <laughs> that is weird. That is weird. But yeah, you're saying in Arcade Plus they've changed it, so you only get that point value from bosses if you hit more than one of their destructible parts at the same time. Yeah. So they wanted to like, like kind of fix it, I guess, maybe. Well, it was one of the main complaints about the game yeah. was that like the gameplay itself was really cool and really straightforward, but the the boss fights were incredibly boring. Um, yeah, the milking uh, literally increases the game's length by by two. <laughs> so like how. Yeah. How lucrative is the is the milking? It's very, very, very lucrative. Oh, okay. It's worth millions, millions of points. <laughs> oh man! So it's like you pretty much want to do it. Uh. <laughs> yeah, if you're playing for for a high score, yeah. Yeah. yeah Mugler and Chad are saying it's four to five, five million. million. Like, uh, it's five very million. high level though. Okay. After you've already like mastered everything else in the game. Then do it. So yeah. Otherwise, you're just wasting time. <laughs> yeah, right, right. But I mean, to give some context, um, the the most recent world record is 44.6 million, I believe. Uh, and so, okay. 5 million points out of that, that's yeah. pretty significant. I mean, yeah. that's, that's more than 10%. Right. Yeah, that's really big. Okay, that's pretty big. Yeah. You could see a YMG do it during the Schwab Mania run. Like all that milking and how much score it give. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, yeah so, the, the, other, the other big difference in you know, 8 plus is that they call it uh, a TLB. Mm -hmm. So uh, after you defeat Ms. Gawa, uh, another boss appears. And that boss gives, uh, it's three phases, it gives, each one gives like a pretty substantial amount of score. Like around the same amount of score you get like if you would be milking in the normal arcade mode, just but not, not as much, like a tiny bit less than that. Like uh, arcade will still, still give more score if you milk, but uh, the TLB in arcade plus gives like a decent, decent chunk of that. Yeah, and I think that's really cool that they sort of like balance the milking out by adding in a new boss uh, and then some new kind of end bonus stuff. I, I think that's a really, really interesting way of making like an arcade plus that, that still pays respects to a lot of the original features of the, the base game, but also adds some new stuff. Um, I think that's a really neat solution. Although I also have heard that the that the TLB has gone through a couple revisions and was like hilariously easy at one point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. you'll see. You'll see in this one. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'm looking forward to it. Yeah, but the milking arcade mode was like like really really excessive to the point of being like kind of stupid. But I like how long it is in like arcade plus. I think that's a decent length for like milking bosses. Mm -hmm. So I think it's all right now, if you ask me. <laughs> I mean, what the run ends up at like 34 minutes, something like that. So milking would be what at like 45 minutes. It's getting on a bit long. Yeah, for I, one think, loop. I think the number one highest scoring replay on the leaderboard is like. 45 minutes on a Kate mode. <laughs> awesome. Awesome, awesome. And uh, so, yeah, we've been talking a little bit about Arcade Plus, which is obviously a feature of the new uh, M2 port. Um, are there any other kind of like distinctive features or, or arrange modes or anything like that that were produced with the port um, other than sort of the, the widgets, which have come to be sort of a staple of the last couple uh, M2 ports, like with the uh, Garaga? And Tetsui, they have those really nice sort of like widgets on the side that show game details, and uh, Esprit does as well. Oh, thank you, Aquas, for for kind of peeking some of those on the stream there. But are there any other kind of cool quality of life improvements that are that are made in the port? Uh, something K Plus also has is that it has uh, like new voices, and added okay. voices. 
so there now there does like a new uh, voice line so like all sorts of things like uh, like when you get max items there's actually like a voice clip for it now in the arcade oh. mode there wasn't there wasn't so uh, it's easier to tell now if you have uh, when you like hit certain things hit certain points it makes it a bit more user friendly I'd, I'd say yeah nice that's cool because like more of the later cave games had like more voice cues so it seems like there's kind of like standardizing it yeah the original s had like very very little voice lines and all of them were like super super scrunched up like uh, like compressed that you can barely hear what anyone is saying <laughs> right but uh, but they really changed it to this like uh, how it is in like i'd say like futari mushimi sound futari like, like the amount of voice lines that game has it's like yeah. around the same now in uh, in arcade plus okay yeah cool I imagine there's no nya though, because you, you can't beat that. That's there's are still new voice lines <laughs> if, you get hit, if you get hit. So and there are luck. There are like five different. Oh, okay. Samples for getting hit nice. for each character <laughs> that, that we won't get to hear because because you don't get hit. That's yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. They also. Oh yeah, I forgot uh, completely. They also added a new uh, playable character in Arcade Plus. Uh, right. That's my story, which is actually the TLB. Which is, uh, she has like the stronger shots with all the three characters, and she'll, and she has like pretty much like a beefed up uh, JB, JB the fifth, pretty wide oh, okay. shot, and then the power shot looks a lot of the, but similar like uh, JB's, but she is like the slowest character in the game, she is the most powerful, so it uh, balances it out. <laughs> I think one of the, one of the voice lines she has when she gets hits is like. Uh, like, what is this shit game? Who made this? Who made this shit game? <laughs> it's pretty silly. Yes. <laughs> That's great. Truly modernizing uh, the game. <laughs> you gotta get the fourth wall commentary. Well, they, well, they even like have like the characters with like the CVs listed right in the trailer, as I recall. So it's like, yeah, you know, so. you know it's, 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 that, it's that hype, that anime hype. Awesome. Yeah, I think besides Arcade Plus, uh, the game, the, the port doesn't have like any other range modes or any other kinds, but it just have, uh, does have like the, the things that I didn't get to report, which is like the Arcade Challenge, Arcade Challenge mode, and uh, like Kizuna mode, it wasn't get to, I think this one is called uh, uh, Sai, Sai, Sai something. <laughs> but you can, uh, that records every time you die, and you can like replay that bit to practice it. Uh, Arcade Ball also lie. Uh, Arcade cool. also lie is what it's called. Yeah. That's really cool. That's the custom mode and the super easy modes. And one of the newer things it has is actually uh, uh, the Iro Irori's room. <laughs> Irori no hair. Which is like uh, a gacha thing. <laughs> okay. Sure if anyone has seen it yet. It's like a big... Uh, it's like a big thing with missions that you get uh, tickets for. With these tickets you can do uh, like gacha and with those gachas you can buy you can get like furniture and clothes and things to like put in your room <laughs> and to dress the characters with it's pretty uh, it's pretty interesting <laughs> yeah that's also fun get, like, pets. also get pets that's pretty neat so when you say clothes does that does that have any impact on the gameplay gameplay or is it like just specific to that mode like, can you change the uh, costumes the characters wear during during arcade run? That's stuff? that's not, but um, it do the pets actually do give you like specific perks. Like uh, the dog gives you powers up your shots. The cat powers up your power shot. Uh, the bird powers up your, your bomb. <laughs> the bomb barrier. At a high enough bird level, the bomb will actually start uh, manual like automatically filling up when it uh, runs out. <laughs> Wow. It's important. It's important for that mode. And the hamster, uh, like, makes your hitbox smaller. That, that's really interesting. So you can sort of make your own arrange mode with with whatever features you want in this sort of Irori's room. Mechanic. Yeah, Irori actually has actually has a couple of arranged things in it. A couple of arranged missions. There are like a couple of missions where uh, the power shot you now cancels bullets. <laughs> it's an arranged mode. There's also an arrangement mode where all the bullets get increasingly faster and faster the longer you survive. 
It's also pretty interesting. <laughs> oh, that's really cool. That, that sort of feels like an homage to the overmode only like Escaluda meta challenge runs. Uh, that's really cool. Yeah, and it also teaches you like uh, like how to play the game and how to get like the one up in stage four. It's pretty neat actually. It's very good for beginners, I'd say. And just getting like people invested in general. Yeah, that's great that there's there's some of those features involved. Um, really cool that they're playing around with the game so much and, and making things that are kind of customizable and more accessible to, to newer players. Yeah, I'm too also uh, like in the beginning of the the release of the port. And to also had a con held a contest who can make for who can make uh, the nicest looking room in Erori's room. <laughs> oh, that's awesome! That's really cute. It's, it's very fun to uh, fun to watch here. Yeah. People made some cool stuff. Some also some very silly stuff. <laughs> um, so there, there's sort of a discussion in chat right now about um, you know, is is uh, the fact that it's a Japanese release a problem? Are, are all the menus and such? understandable to uh to english speakers or or are some of these more advanced features like the audio room and such is that are you going to need to be able to speak japanese to to take advantage of that i don't think you really need to know japanese for it. i think it's pretty like uh, self-explanatory as long as you like figure out what like the menus do but you can just that's not very hard to figure out i think cool i think there's also like just translations for it on uh on the form as well, from if I remember right. Okay, nice. Well, um, is there anything else to talk about before we dive into the replay proper? Um, don't think so. No. That's probably good. I mean, this is pretty much our official ESP Rade episode at this point. Let's just say. <laughs> Because, like, yeah, you guys get a, get a pretty good primer on the scoring and stuff, and, uh, yeah. We're just going to call us the s braid episode, guys. <laughs> cool. <laughs> get it out of the way. Yeah. Yeah, we've been talking for quite a bit, actually. <laughs> it's cool, though. This is this is awesome. So, yeah, I think we're I think we're about ready to get into this run and have uh, some commentary about what's going on with the scoring and what Jamers is doing. Should be good. Well, let's do it. So we were watching uh, the um, Jamers' uh, All Clear 37 million run of Arcade Plus, but now we'll be watching a different run, the Shmup Mania run. Just to clarify, we're not going to be seeing the same one we were just looking at there. So uh, from zero, I suppose, we can uh, get, get into this. Uh, are we ready? I'm ready. All right, great. Frenetic is uh, lurking, but... Uh, I think he I think he's probably good as well. Alright. Here comes the countdown. Three, two, one, go. Yeah, this was my second best score actually for uh, for this game. <laughs> my key plus. That's pretty awesome. surprised. Oh actually we didn't talk about the stage order. So are you using a fixed stage order for this run? Yeah, I use a fixed stage order, yeah, that's pretty important. <laughs> because you do the the first three stages are actually like always randomized and that the first stage is dependent on like uh, the character you start with, so uh, you do want to have like fixed stage order to like score the best, of course. <laughs> right. This is also, also pick, I always uh, pick uh, high school second and then shopping mall third. Yeah, the first thing you want to do is like power up in the game. And uh, to get the most like cubes out of these enemies, you have to like hit them. You have to destroy them. Like it's, at the moment, they're about to fire. It's pretty, uh, pretty particular. Oh, interesting. Okay, I did not it's know about of, that. Yeah, it's kind of the same with like the the orange cubes, but a bit uh, different. It's pretty hard to uh, like get to full power until this point here. Yeah. Want to be like full power, of course, as soon as possible, because you get like the time sixty multiplier. Mm -hmm. Right, and then you want to be full power both because it increases your shot strength and because it ties into scoring. Yeah, exactly. Or the, exactly. the sub shot level. Yeah, exactly. Also, bullets don't get cancelled until you are uh, at max power. So. so, are you doing a little bit of milking on this turret here on the on the ship? Yeah, just like look at tiny bits with the with like one part of the of the power shot. Look at the tiny bit. Like why not? <laughs> 
That's pretty neat. And then here, delaying the kill so you can get a time 16 and a bigger cancel. Yeah, nice. A yeah, bigger boot cancel, yeah. That's cool. And like the screen's like slow at that point as well. Man, very good. <laughs> yeah, it really That's slows so down without hitting that part. There's some cool scrolling adjustments in this game where they like speed up or slow down the screen based on what's happening. Yeah, you want to cancel as many bullets as possible, of course, to get uh, more items. So you're hitting uh, on... the, time, the timing is like all different for like every single enemy. <laughs> if you want to get like the, the optimal cancels. And also different between like every uh, shot, uh, every shot, uh, every count. Because <laughs> everyone has different damage values. And so again, now we're seeing some of this, this milking where you're just hitting multiple subcomponents of the boss with that power shot. Yeah, this boss is like one of the things that doesn't change all that much between like Arcade and Arcade Plus. Because it has like so many different <laughs> boss parts. Mm -hmm. uh, this this first part has like four different destructible parts. Uh, see the turrets and the parts behind the turrets. You can all get, can get those all four of them at the... Uh, like a big multiplier and you want to like destroy them on uh, like a lot of bullets are like crossing over it so you get the most items out of it it's like pretty it's really quite hard to actually time and uh, set up because you have to be like you have to do like a health management it's like very important and the boss also like moves around a lot which makes it hard to get close to the boss to get like the the fence you blow on it but I also I'll always like time it after like uh, the aimed, aimed blue shots. Yeah. Or purple or purple or pink here, you can see. That's like the best cancel you can get right there. And the amount of uh, aimed pink lights actually increases the more parts you destroy, which you also have to like keep in mind. <laughs> this is the only boss I like really try to milk. <laughs> because it also gets like the most in terms of score. Yeah, cool. So yeah, for the, the YMG strat with the, the bomb at the beginning, you basically have to get like perfect cancels here on all the uh, on all the on all the parts. If you if you mess it up, it's basically a reset. It's like that strict. So would he be aiming for 300 uh, items by this point? Or yeah. wow, yeah, yeah that's, that's crazy. Right the start of stage two, because you want fever mode at the start of stage two. Because if you lose a lot of score, if you don't. <laughs> If you don't yeah, have that, is, that. That is very strict. Yeah, it's it's really, really hard. And like the second part here, second phase here, there's uh, no no uh, no boss parts, so you can just speed kill it. Man, I, I love thing. these stage transitions. It's so stylish. It's one of my favorite aspects of this game. The interesting thing with uh, that second phase of the first of the first boss actually is uh, in arcade mode. The time off for that is uh, infinite. It doesn't time out. Oh, interesting. So does that so end up getting milked a lot in arcade mode? Yeah, you basically have all the time in the world to uh, to milk that. <laughs> so it uh, ends up being pretty long. Nice time sixteen on the the tanks under that. That, that can be kind of hard to time that kind of broken roof section there. I kind of actually get like a timestamp I've been uh, buffering a bit here. Oh, okay. Um, I just hit 552, Dave's 2 mid-boss entry. 552, okay. Is there anything special about this mid-boss? Or are you just going for a speed kill here? I just you want speed killers actually, yeah, because there are additional waves that come if you uh, speed kill this boss. Ah, so like that's enemies. Nice. Yeah. Very nice. You can see all these enemies here are extra, the big tanks and uh, the and the blue guys. Uh, one important thing about this stage are those uh, yellow yellow uh, flying flying enemies. They consist of three diff individual parts. And, uh, it shoots a different sh different uh, bullet type in every part. And everybody individually gives like uh, like point items. So you want ah. to uh, the, th the third phase shoots the most bullets. So you want to uh, wow. 
actually want to do that. And then cancel as many points as possible. I mess it up a lot in this uh, this replay, but <laughs> okay. can, get a lot of, can get a lot more cancels here. So I, I knew that like, there were at least two different parts, but I didn't know there were three. Uh, that's pretty neat. Yeah, the third form gets like a big burst of bullets. Very lucrative. And these guys also want to like cancel for uh, big, big more players. But they, I, I'm not sure exactly how they work because they seem to like move pretty randomly, like at the start, or start uh, of the boss. So it's pretty hard to get like the most out of them every time because they move around so randomly. And they also like bits, like how, they also like how you move, they respawn a bit to how you move. It's pretty weird. It's not really understand it all that much. Yeah, the movement of some of this this boss and the, the kind of the pre-boss enemies there can be pretty tricky. I have stage two boss here. This guy is like the most random thing in the game. <laughs> yeah. Like all the attacks he chooses are uh, at random, and it moves around really randomly, and it's it's a big mess. <laughs> you want to always like uh, finish it off doing that attack where he stands still. So that's the easiest time to get like a uh, time sixty multiplier. Right. Especially since he also shoots out some some bullets there. One of the denser attack. Yeah. Uh, these, he also shoots out, the, uh, shoots out these bits, these, uh, these side enemies. Uh, what pattern they shoot is also random. There are like uh, three or four different patterns they can shoot. Mm -hmm. yeah, of course you want to have to, like the one where it just shoots the aim bullets. It's the, the easiest by far and also the easiest to just milk some points off. You can get some extra points here for milking, uh, like shooting two of those bits at once in a K plus. Ah, okay. So it applies to that part too, okay. Yeah. I guess that makes sense because they are destructible. The subtitle this guy can be like a dick and not give this attack at all where he stands still. Yeah, this That's can kind be of a, a it's kind of problem. This can be a pretty mean fight. If you're just playing this game for survival, like definitely don't have this as the third stage, because he has five health bars and he spawns like a like a clone of himself. Yeah, um, yeah, it yeah. It's quite a bit harder. Yeah, it's interesting thing is that uh, like the timer, like how much time uh, this boss has, doesn't change between uh, stage two and stage three versions. Oh. So I think that's one of the reasons why a lot of this plays pick this stage second. Because uh, because you have less time on the on the third stage, so to milk it. That yeah, that makes sense. That's really interesting that it. They're not adjusting for the extra health or the clone at all. Yeah, I just noticed that because of uh, the M2 port. It shows like all the boss timers and uh, and the health and stuff. On the first uh, boss actually says infinite, like under the, the boss timer. That's awesome. For the second phase. Stage two, you can get like a lot of chains. Yeah, this is where uh, you really want to have fever mode because you can just chain into every any enemy and of the enemy, get like all the all the items, all the score items. When I was uh, playing for a clear, I was playing uh, JV fifth, and so I, I've actually never seen this stage played like for score uh, until watching watching the from mini runs, and uh, it's really interesting just how many chains you can get in this opening section. How, how like fast it's yeah there are so many more enemies <laughs> the change act the stages actually change like quite a bit between uh, like if it's between the, the stages if it's one two or three right it's pretty significant difference actually but yeah I yeah, just want to uh, shoot these guys when they shoot their, uh, the wet the wet pattern to get some extra cancels. Uh, these big guys actually have like, they actually have like five, five different parts to them. Really? Uh, yeah, you can see it on in the the widgets. And each has different uh, score values. <laughs> so you want to get like all four of those parts with uh, the big multiplier. It's pretty hard to do though. Yeah, but. And now for the car. 
That, and the engine noise like haunts me. <laughs> it's just. Uh... So do you go for all of the the kind of uh, wheel pods on this? Yeah, yeah. This guy also has um, six destructible things you can destroy. And <laughs> uh, more, more actually. Like the, the wheels, the front parts have two different things you can destroy, and the back parts as well. So that's about the eight things or something. <laughs> oh man, Plasma and Chad joking about the Moochie Moochie port car. That's the Bravo right there. And the, the horse one, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's a that's a hard boss. Um, yeah, okay, so you're, you're taking off all all the little tread parts here. Oh, and then and then timing the cancel on the last one with the boss phase change. That's really nice. Automatically, you get the time sixteen that way. <laughs> I want to destroy the back part uh, quickly because it shoots like that blue blue spread pattern. It's yeah, a lot easier to uh, destroy it quickly. And uh, just okay, the start of the second phase is also like pretty pretty weird how it aims at you, but. It's a lot easier if you like stay on the left side at the first wave and on the right side for the second wave and keep repeating that. That is how you make it uh, is the easiest. Yeah, I, I'm noticing you're sort of like macroing outside of that a little bit. It's pretty nice. Yeah, I'm not sure really sure how the aiming works on that, but it's really weird. But that way, is, if you do it that way, it's just easy for some reason. <laughs> and the nice cancel at the end there. Yeah, that's a pretty juicy cancel. <laughs> yeah. Big juicy cancels. Okay. okay, at the start of the stage, you want to do like uh, the first bomb of the run. And quickly uh, fill your bomb back up before uh, the timer runs out. And what's the purpose of that bomb? Is that like carrying your chain over from the previous stage? Also, I, uh, you just collected the one up there, which is located on on the tail end of one of those the subway that comes on the right side. If you bomb there, you won't get the one up. Yeah, exactly. Um, the bomb is purely to increase uh, the max item count. Because okay. uh, at the end of, at the end of the game, you get awarded for how many items you have when the game ends. So if you have for, like a higher item maximum item count. You obviously get more score that way. Gotcha. It's a big difference if you have like 200 or 500. So <laughs> that's why you want to incorporate some bombs into your one to increase it. But it's like really hard to route the bombs in, as I said. So it's pretty tricky. Yeah. Well, since it's related to, to score, but also to the bomb recharges, and you want to have some bombs available during the Alice clone section, I can see how that would be really tricky to figure out. It's uh, juggling a lot of things, yeah. That's like very big repercussions in the future for everything. <laughs> like something you do in uh, in this stage may have an effect in like a couple of stages over. That's how strict it is. <laughs> yeah, and then now, now I see you're in the fever mode here. This is a good time to have it because the screen can get really clogged up in this section if you don't take things out quickly. And fever mode helps with a lot of the canceling that offers. Yeah, the bomb is actually really good for this stage because fever mode doesn't really affect the stage all that much. Until like this very end section here. Yeah. Yeah, it's yeah with one the... of the hardest things to do in the game, I think. <laughs> this uh this small plane rush is getting uh it's keeping the chain all the way to the end, getting the max cancels. It's like really yeah, hard. That was, that was really nice. Now the stage four boss. This this thing is mean. I remember trying to get to this boss and like learn how to deal with it for survival. Um, it's surprisingly very aggressive. Yeah, there are a couple of tricks to it though. Like uh, like right here, you can stay on the right side of the screen to like avoid most of the those pink bullets because they mostly go down like the, the left side of the screen. Like the second part, second fear, second attack, you could also like macro a lot. <laughs> the end is a bit tricky. So I'm noticing that there's a visible hitbox here. Is that an Arcade Plus exclusive thing? And is that always present or do you have to be like holding down the the rapid shot button for that to show up? Uh, quick thing, these green, these green discs, it shoots the boss. 
Uh, if you hit two or more of them, you also get like points for the power shot. Oh, really? Oh, that's, that's so it. weird. Okay. That's the only thing you can milk in this boss. <laughs> but yeah, the Vessel hitbox is actually just a, a port thing. You can enable it in the arcade mode as well. No, uh, uh, it still counts for like the leaderboard if you have it on. So I think that would be super, same. super helpful. Man, this, yeah, this, this macro this dodge on this attack is so cool. Yeah, this helps a lot. Yeah, it's a pretty hard attack. Yeah, it's very hard. But yeah, the visible box is very helpful in this game, I think, because uh, they, they haven't really mentioned it, but. Uh, Hitbox in this game is like really weird. It's like in the neck of the character. It's like it's very off center. Yeah. Yeah, especially so, uh, if you're used to where they are in like the the of the game, coming back to this. It yeah, feels like the hitbox yeah. is like in your head. Yeah. Could never really get used to that, but uh with the visible hitbox it makes it a lot easier to uh it's definitely a big help, I'd say. Yeah, that's a huge quality of life thing for people who are new to the game. Mm, for sure. So stage five, or five A, I guess I should say, because there's there's more to come. Yeah, this is a long stage. <laughs> Sounds like you uh, customized the soundtrack because I don't believe this is the is this the normal ar arcade sound. Doesn't sound like it to me. Is it normal one? Stereo. This is the stereo uh, arrange. Mm. Oh. It's a bit, it's a lot it's a bit like the arcade sound, but a bit more uh, enhanced. Can you customize the tracks, like, between the versions of the stages? Uh, no, I don't think you can. Okay. Can they all, can only have one or the other, unfortunately. That was a thing in the uh, Muchi port and Pink Sweets port. Yeah. M2 it's fucked really up. Nice. No, just kidding. <laughs> it's like the one thing they didn't do. The one thing, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the M2, this M2 port is just simply amazing. Like, you'd think it's, you know, wouldn't be that crazy because it's, you know, kind of more, they're one of the straightforward games, but like the hitbox thing and then all the other, like, yeah. all the other stuff, like it just, it all adds up to really, really quality uh, port. So, yeah, guys, get that Japanese account and get this port. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, it's, it's really good, yeah. You guys well, support just the M2. fact that it got ported at all, like, yeah. you know, this, this game is, for so long, was not very accessible at all. You could only play it in arcade, uh, or, or in MAME, I guess. Um, True. And, uh, and now there's really, really accurate port available for it on major home console with all these cool quality of life enhancements. Like, that's really cool. Yeah, I don't think it ever had a port, like, at all <laughs> before now. Yeah, I, I don't believe it ever did. We're just kind of glossing over some of the movement here, but that, that section with the two tanks, that was handled really well by like kind of speed killing one of them and then moving over to the other. The two really big yeah, those, those tanks. Yeah, tanks are really difficult. Like, the, they're very random, so yeah. you can be annoying. Uh, here you want to have that cancel on the big guy. If you if you get the big cancel, you have enough chain time to get like all these red guys here. Oh, that that was so cool, that really so long good. chain there. So I gotta nice. say, the chaining looks really satisfying in this game once you get it going. But like, damn, yeah, yeah. hell if I ever did that when I played casually. <laughs> yeah, it, it definitely feels Be lucky to different. get one going. Yeah, this is really cool to see these, these like planned chain routes. It's really neat. Yeah, it takes a bit to get used to, especially uh, like starting one. <laughs> like how to get like a time 16 on a, on a, on a single enemy. It's trickier than it looks, so it's surprised me a lot actually. So then here, like, is... like distance, you have to like keep distance in mind between the enemy and all that stuff for like damage management, <laughs> and it's different for every enemy, and it's a lot of practice to get like to get it right. But yeah, earlier I did like another bomb. That was another plant bomb mm -hmm. to get like the to 500 before the end of the game. Yeah, that makes sense. And so then here you're just using uh, the the milking trick against the 5A kind of mid boss. Yeah, the turrets. Uh, if you hit the turret and the shield, then you get uh, the two parts that give you a score. <laughs> so 
So you can do a tiny bit of milking here. Mm -hmm. Until the, the turrets then get destroyed and then it's over. I always like this this mid boss section because you, you can do all these kind of fun around the world dodges with it. Yeah, I wonder how uh, like intentional that is actually. It certainly makes it a ton easier. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, those uh, red bullets are actually the revenge bullets. So uh, it, you can actually like manage them so they don't get in your way. Ah, okay. So yeah, I see. When you stop shooting, the, the red bullets stop coming towards you. So they're sort of reflected back from the shield. That's pretty neat. Mm. Yeah, if you shoot like the, the white side of the shield and then uh, stay a bit on the right and then move left and uh, clockwise around the boss, then all the suicide bullets should uh, be out of your way. And it has two faces and it uh, gets... The revenge bullets get more and more between uh, every phase. Mm -hmm. yeah, another thing this board actually does, you can see above in the, in the life bar, like those uh, those lines that indicate the phase transitions. And those are not there in uh, the original arcade version of the game. Right. Yeah, that's super helpful on, on this boss and some of the other ones that have these kind of discrete phases but don't have separate health bars. Yeah, you just have to like memorize like uh, which digit of the score uh, the phase transition is. It's kind of annoying. <laughs> yeah, definitely. The fun thing about this boss is that uh, it actually has a timeout phase at like uh, 30 seconds remaining and one minute remaining in arcade mode. And it's like this super impossible thing. <laughs> it's, it's really crazy. I haven't managed to like dodge it at all. Oh, wow. OK. I don't think I've even seen that. Yeah, it's pretty obscure. But it's actually one of the achievements of the game. <laughs> it's like triggering that. So if you're not milking this here, why are you keeping it alive for so long? I'm just being like super safe here. <laughs> OK. Yeah, I, I can see that. I mean, it's really dangerous to try to weave back and forth through this thing. Mm. Really important that you finish the boss off with uh, time 16 here. Because yeah. it carries over into the next part of the stage. Right. Are you going to immediately bomb to try to preserve that? or? Yeah. Okay. Also preserve between stages normally. Every stage. You can see here if you bomb, uh, look at the chain chain timer. You can see how it like, jumps up. Like oh, it actually goes up. It, it doesn't yeah. even just stay still. It goes up. That's crazy. Yeah, that's uh, what player two does. <laughs> oh, damn. Wow. So you want to bomb a couple of times here to get like a, a very high J time to get like everything at time 16 here. Very cool. Oh, that, that's great. Yeah, I mean, I, I knew that it didn't go down, but I didn't realize that it actually like kept building up if you bombed. That's <laughs> crazy. So right here, I want to have uh, the bomb recharge exactly after you kill the last beetle here. Mm -hmm. Just uh, 400 items. I actually didn't get it here, which is uh, easily like the biggest biggest mistake of the one here. Because uh, you want to bomb that and then you get like everything in time 16 here. Right. It's like, like five. It costs like like over a million points, that mistake. Another really thing, another big thing with this thing, uh, you see those jumping Alice clones, right? The jumping ones? Yeah, those things are awful. Yeah, they keep respawning when you kill them. And uh, there's actually a thing where if you bomb bomb them and uh, keep killing them, you can get like a super very high value bomb for it. But it's like really random because the Alice clones like jump on randomly and they spawn randomly. But I have with like in, uh, in practice I've had like difference between like 800,000 and like one and a half million for that bomb. It's like a really huge differences. Interesting. And it, it reminds me a lot of like uh, the flamingos in Battle Kuranga. Right, yeah. Just kind of very, very random and hard to predict what you're going to get out of it. Yeah, it's it's really weird. <laughs> so you just quit killing the first phase of uh, the Gara fight here, right? Oh, I didn't even know this had a separate name. This is called Ares. That's cool. Yeah. Uh, this boss actually uses like a bunch of different random attacks that overlap over each other. 
Yeah. That's a bunch of like five different kinds. I use a bomb here to uh, set up the time 16 and also to get a bunch of extra items for uh, the end game bonus. Because I want to fill that up to 500 before the end of the game. And now for Gara. Yeah, the first race is definitely the, the hardest. <laughs> it's very, very random. Especially uh, the blue balls here. Yeah. Well, and the, the kind of split rings, the red the red sort of split ring pattern can also be really hard to dodge if you're not kind of aggressive in terms of moving up and moving with it. Mm. Uh, if you're just trying to sit at the bottom of the screen and move left and right, it can actually trip you up a lot. Yeah, you'll just get walled if you do that. <laughs> yeah. It's really hard to get uh, time 16 on it. And then uh, sort of an interesting parallel to the, the Luda games later with the, with the big butterfly wings, which is like a very common theme in those games for bosses and even the player characters. Mm -hmm. exactly. But this phase is easier than the first one for sure. Mostly it's just one to aim. Like, yeah. yeah, it's mostly just aimed and a bunch of random uh, random blue bullets. That Where first phase. Uh, uh, third phase has these uh, these blue walls. Uh, this is actually fairly random. Like where uh, the where things start in that rotation is random. So uh, it's a bit different between every every credit, but you can like form a route that works like most of the time. A big thing with this phase is actually that you want to like squall out certain bullet spawn positions because you can see like the on the depths of the wings you see bullets. Uh, spawn points. You can actually scroll those out and then they won't shoot you. That's a big thing to not get walled by that part. Yeah. Nice. I, I hadn't seen that strategy before. Also, this, this pattern with the big purple bullets, man. I remember getting here for the first time and just getting absolutely destroyed. Like, if you yeah. don't know this is coming, oh, it's, it's brutal. Yeah, this is very brutal if you don't know what to do. <laughs> But with a uh, with a route, you can do this like very very consistently. Yeah. Just a lot of misdirection. Yeah, I, the specific points I misdirect like every wave to to give like the most space. And it's always the same like which fires, which ones fire first, and all that stuff. And you're waiting yeah. it out here for a time sixteen, right? Yeah. yeah. In arcade mode, you can look like, this phase for a pretty significant long amount of time. like the only phase you can really milk in the uh, arcade mode. <laughs> and final pattern. This one, is also, this one is also very, very random. Yeah. It's also another one where if you don't really know the trick to it, like if you don't know to get so aggressive with it, it will really trip you up. Yeah. You really want to stay like high and like above, above Gawa so you don't uh, get walled by the purple waves. Yeah. Because the purple waves are, are kind of static, but the blue ones are aimed. Mm, or aimed exactly. They're just aimed, yeah. Uh, the duration of each wave is uh, also random. It can be really short, it can be really long. Yeah. Uh, there's, there's actually a trick to know when something is going to be short or long. Uh, if you watch uh, Gara, you can see how much she moves between spots. But the distance actually determines how long she's going to shoot. Oh. If she only moves a tiny bit, she's going to shoot very short. If she moves like all the way across the screen, then she's going to shoot like for a very long time. Interesting. That's actually very useful to know for um, the final shot to get the time 16. Yeah. Because you want to know when she's going to like stand still for the longest amount of time so you can get the shot in. That's actually like very important. The other and you thing really, wa really, really want the X16 here on the final phase because it's worth... Uh, 800,000 points. Wow, okay. So that's, uh, that's a lot, <laughs> so you want to have that. Yes, I see you're kind of stalling here, waiting for a good opening. And this boss can, this span can actually just wall you sometimes and there's nothing you can do about it. Yeah, well, and the other thing is, if you, if you bomb... Oh, here comes the new TLB. 
If you bomb, she like flies off the screen, and as she comes back in, that can be really dangerous depending on where she is in her cycle. Yeah. You don't want to accidentally kill her with the bomb, <laughs> because then you lose like 800,000 points. And yeah, the new boss. Uh, it's three phases. All of them are like fairly easy. <laughs> First one, you want to just misdirect to like the side of the screen. For the big, uh, the big blue spread. Yeah, not, this steel bear is like really easy. It's actually honestly like the, the easiest boss in the game. <laughs> I'm not sure why they made it so easy. And is this, uh, I heard that there was an update to this. Is it more challenging now or is it still quite easy? Yeah, very, very recently they added another TLB to this game that triggers oh. if you uh, do certain, certain, do certain, uh, certain things. <laughs> that being, uh, two miss or less. And if you do that, then a new TLB appears. That is significantly harder. Okay. It's like an actual true uh, TLB. <laughs> way, way, way harder than uh, anything Damn. else in the game. That's sick. <clears throat> uh, a real cave TLB. That's Let's really see. cool. That's really cool that this game got not one, but two different, like, optional TLB fights, uh, you know, so many years after it originally came out. Yeah, and also like uh, this new update is like the new TLB is like four months after release or something, so that's pretty cool. <laughs> that's pretty neat. Uh, for this boss again, you want to get like all the time 16 because they are worth a lot. Yeah. Especially the third phase is very, it's also like, also to like 800k, I think. Nice. Awesome run. And then the clear bonus ticking away there. That's what, almost 10 million points, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Very, very cool. The end game bonus is very, very big in this game. Like every life is worth a million already, and uh, every extra box you have is a half a million. So it adds up a lot, and the items as well, the bomb, the bomb chicken. Wow. Yeah. Very nice. Well done. Thank you, thank well you. Well done. Uh, yeah, let's, let's see. Um, before the boss, I had like 23 million. And after that, that's that almost 34. So that's more than like 10 million. <laughs> yeah. Clear bonus. By it adds up a lot in this game. It's very important. Yeah, definitely. I mean, especially, you know, your total score is 33 million, 34 million. So that end bonus is like a third of your score. Yeah. It's huge. Definitely. Yeah, so actually, um, interesting question from MTBD500 in the chat. Um, was this new TLB made by M2 or, or was Cave involved specifically in the creation of it? Uh, I think it was just M2, if I uh, read everything about it correctly. That's super interesting, actually. Um, it's cool that they did that, though. Yep, definitely. <laughs> they went uh, far and beyond with uh, everything in this in this port. <laughs> um, so there was another video that you you shared with us about that new TLB that was just added. Um, do we have time to show that, Aquas? I think so. I think so. Oh, cool. <laughs> Should we get that queued up now, or is there anything you want to say kind of before we go into that or, or after that run? Uh, uh, this one was a no miss, actually. Yeah? The first no miss I ever did <laughs> was during the, the marathon. Uh, it didn't be B because... Oh, I didn't, uh, I didn't realize that was your first no miss. Wow! Yeah. yeah, congratulations. Yeah, I was I was really surprised about that. Very Thanks, cool. Yeah. yeah, I mean, I knew you were, I knew you were really happy about how you performed on the run, but I guess I didn't mm -hmm. put it together that that was your first no miss. That's awesome. Yeah, came uh, out of nowhere, really. <laughs> but yeah, I didn't quite PB because uh, I like messed up like five B stage five B was uh, that bomb I missed was very very costly. I think that was mostly like the biggest thing that made it not be me. So you can see how much that uh, 
that were important that it did not mess up 5B. Because yeah, 5B that's is just, weird. That's just that one long recharge like, timing you talked yeah. about on that Beetle. Yeah, exactly. T5B is worth like five and a half million if we do it correctly. It's like wow. very, very big. <laughs> Definitely don't want to mess that up. Yeah, that's a lot. All right. Yeah. <laughs> so this is gonna be the the added boss plus the new plus the new new boss. Uh, this yeah, this video actually also shows the new uh, added shot type. Just uh, funny enough, the same as the boss. <laughs> Cool. The and also has like a, also has like a unique ending that was recently added actually in the same patch for the TLB. Oh, cool. Okay. Is that new ending specific to the Alice player type, or is there is there new ending for the other characters as well? Uh, just the Alice player type. Okay. Right on. All right, let's uh, let's check that out. All right, I'll count us yep. down. Three, sure. two. One, go. See, as I said, uh, the trick is if you get two miss or less. If you get more, then you just get the, the old TLB that you just saw. Mm -hmm. Oh, so this is the new one already, okay. This is the new one, yeah. Gotcha. You can you probably tell like, like how much harder it already is. Yeah, it's already <laughs> way more aggressive. Yeah, I had to... Uh, use Alice for this one because he's the most powerful. Ah, it goes like, below you. Oh, that's great. Like uh, Irori, like really, really struggles on this boss because he does so little damage. Man, these like lances, that's such a cool pattern. Yeah, she suits like, uh, like swords at you or something. That's really cool. Yeah, second phase is like this really weird pattern. You have to misdirect these purple uh, walls while also dodging the aimed uh, blue lines. It's really, really tricky to get like uh, yeah. get down. That looks mean. Yeah. Oh, there's bouncy bullets too. Yeah, this here's a Katsui pattern. <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. So now we have Katsui and uh, Aspirate. <laughs> Yeah, it definitely feels like a vacuum year there. Damn, that was pretty good. Pretty yeah, cool. That's, <laughs> that's pretty intense. Mm -hmm. Now face uh, all the Alice clones start circling around you, and uh, Alice also circles inside the circle. Had to bring back the Alice clones. <laughs> yeah. He has to actually shoot uh, one of the clones to actually do damage here. Oh, so you can do damage to her by shooting the clone. Okay. Yeah. The way everything spawns initially is a bit random, but you can you can usually follow the same route here through the, the blue lines. And then you have to the final phase here. It's pretty random as well, actually. Very, very difficult. Ooh, but if you, yeah, nice. if you do the first phase well, and uh, also play as Alice, then it should end like pretty quickly. Uh, with Evo, we have to basically like dodge the entire <laughs> final panel. Nice. It's really, it's really difficult. <laughs> no, like, like last little bit that lasts for like two minutes, like other t t certain TLBs. <laughs> uh, the part after, uh, actually pay attention to the the white side here, all stage clear bonus. There's a times two there, if you uh, saw it. Oh. So uh, if you beat this TLB, you get times to uh, the end game bonus. Wow. Which is uh, a, a very, very huge thing, Whoa. actually. <laughs> yeah, that's 22 million just from that fight. Yeah. Wow. That's a huge game changer for Arcade Plus, that TLB with the end game bonus. Yeah, so this run overall would have been 47 million. Um, wow. Wow. Yeah, compared to what, 30, 33, 34 on the previous run we saw? Yeah. So that's uh, pretty nutty. <laughs> yeah, that's insane. That's insane. Does that boss also have the the cave TLB? Like, if you try to bomb, it'll be barriered or it'll go off screen? Yes, or yes it has. It has, yeah. That's a bomb barrier. <laughs> okay. And the previous TLB did not, actually. Oh, really? So you could just bomb the Alice TLB 
in the in the not secret version of it. Yeah, <laughs> it was pretty pathetic. <laughs> All things considered. Mm. All right. Wow. But yeah, Aquas. Uh, after that final phase, the, it actually loops back to the first phase. But that phase is now uh, twice as hard, and it's like basically undodgeable. So you really want to kill the boss before that. <laughs> oh, okay, I see. Wow. Well, awesome stuff. It's it's so exciting to see that this game is not only you know available to people now, but actually kind of like growing. You know, there's new content being added. There's new modes being added. There's um, there's new you know new ways to play it that there have not been for the last what twenty years. Yeah, it's it's pretty exciting. Yeah, because uh, really like also with the leaderboards, like suddenly you see all these uh, these aspirate like super players like coming out of the woodwork, nice. and it's like very fun to see. Because there weren't actually like a whole lot of replays available for this game like before. But now there's like a whole, whole ton of them and like all these people that I've not seen before coming out of the woodwork. <laughs> it's very exciting, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it must be. Um, and you said Clover Tack is playing again? Yeah, he recently uh, like improved his world record. Like for the for like the, I think the 20th anniversary of the game, he came back to the game and set a new world record. <laughs> It's pretty pretty crazy. Wow! I don't think I don't think it's played it for like years. Man, that's that's awesome. That's just awesome. Freaking beast, man! Yeah, what a legend. Beasts. <laughs> I've played the game for twenty years. Come back, set a new world record. No big deal. Yeah, just casually. Ah. <laughs> uh. Well, um. Let's see. There's there's a question from chat. Uh, what what's kind of your next big game? Like, what are you working on right now? Sure, actually, I just kind of like go where I want, like go wherever, <laughs> go where the wind takes you. Yeah, basically. Awesome. Not really working on anything specific specific right now, but I do like I'm playing like a whole bunch of games right now. <laughs> Yeah, give gamers a break, guys. Come on. <laughs> well, yeah. Um, I still need to upload like 10 videos or something from uh, Kali's Cup. <laughs> yeah, dude, you beast. Yeah, that. you, good you God. tore that apart. Good, good I stuff still want to that. play uh, some of those games more, actually, from the Kali's Cup. Very nice. Get a better score on them. Meekless, uh, Ryan Fighter's Jet Tool. <laughs> I mean, I actually just meant to say one all, but <laughs> but I, yeah, the two the two second loop is a thing in the U.S. version anyway. Yeah, I think I heard something about that. Yeah, nah, I, I think I'll stick to the the one loop for now. <laughs> <laughs> Silly U.S. version, second loop. Mm. Yeah, that game is like super hard actually. It's like way harder than I expected. Anyway, guys, this was uh, pretty fun, and uh, yeah, we got to learn a lot about uh, ESP Rade and Raid, or whatever you want to say it. I guess it is Raid. Well, I, I think I think the full title is ESP Raging Deicide, right. which, by the way, is an absolutely metal title. Like, <laughs> <laughs> like man, that is that is so hardcore. Man, <laughs> with the Sai attached attached to the end as well. <laughs> Okay. Right. Good stuff. Good stuff. Um. So yeah, I don't thank know. You so I mean, much for coming on. we probably won't have like the official Esprit episode for a long time because I think we did cover a lot of stuff, and I think it was uh pretty well done. Uh, you guys did a pretty good job explaining. So um, I hope this uh, episode give me a nice guide for people to kind of step in and you know the port really does offer a lot for uh newcomers with the super easy mode and all the widgets to help you learn and then you know downloadable re downloadable replays is that is that correct as well yeah yeah, that's... yeah and all the aurora room stuff sounds like it could also be used to make the game significantly easier uh yes. if you wanted to if you wanted to set it up that yeah, way it's really fun mm -hmm. yeah, it, makes, it makes it very approachable i'd say yeah hey, Rory room, also to learn learn the game and you guys gotta support them too, because uh, if you want more awesome stuff like this, uh, they do have to make some money, after all. So do, yeah, do support them. 
And uh, yeah. Yeah. Very good. Very good. With All that, right, well, uh, uh, yeah, that about wraps up. Yeah, feel free to. You can close it out. Yeah. Uh, no, I was just going to say, you know, thank you so much for coming on, Jamers, and I'm I'm really glad that uh, at the last minute you were able to to hop into the schedule. Uh, it was definitely one of the highlights of the of the event for me was seeing this game being played and and played so well uh, by by all the players. But your run especially was really cool to watch. Um, thanks, thanks. So uh, no problem, no problem, of course. Yeah, yeah, I, I really love this game, and I'm really glad we were finally able to feature it on the show. Um, so awesome. Okay, guys, that'll do for episode 178. Do take care. Have a great rest of the weekend. And uh, till the next uh, mania of the shmups. And uh, keep playing shmups. We'll catch you next time. Later. Later, guys. <laughs>